Man, I remember growing up and going to the movies with my family and watching these movies and thinking like, man, this was all done with one camera in camera, you know? Obviously, I wasn't thinking that because I knew nothing about filmmaking. I just thought it was all a seamless one-cut wonder, you know? But later on in my life when I learned filmmaking, that's when I realized that Hollywood put on a big magic show for us in every movie that I watched. Crazy to think about this, but this is where the most imperative part of color grading comes into play, and that is shot matching. What is shot matching? Shot matching is matching the shots between each clip in a scene and matching them with your exposure, your color correction, your white balance, and the most important part is the skin tones because the skin tones are what a lot of people will first notice when they're looking at a shot. So we're going to talk all about shot matching today and we're going to teach you guys an easy method to shot match. If you guys are spending more than 10 minutes on a shot, oh, bless your hearts, okay? I'm going to try to speed up your editing workflow and teach you guys how to shot match and get everything balanced within just a few minutes let's get going all right so last week we were looking at this shot right and we created this epic three strip technicolor look and what we're going to do here is we're going to erase everything that i've done last week and we're going to balance this to match the shot next to it okay and this is the crucial part on the editing process like what I said earlier, right? And before we even get to the three strip Technicolor and actually creating the look, it is very important to do this shot matching. Otherwise, you know, you'll have inconsistencies in everything. So we're gonna go back in here and we're gonna convert this into Rec 709. We're gonna look at our balance. Of course, last week we balanced a shot and it is absolutely perfect. Now this was shot in what RE Log C4, the RE Alexa 35. And I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. Someone is messaging me. Okay. Now last week we did say that these shots were shot on the RE Alexa 35. And again, I am including this shot here and also the node tree in the description box below for you to download so you guys can follow along and you know put your own tweet to it if you guys want to but this is my gift for you guys you know i did all the math work i did everything that i needed to do to make this technicolor work and i think that it's going to be an amazing tool to have for your next project if you really wanted to go old school but again let's forget these looks for a second and let's just go back into our balance okay and we're going to balance that with the shot we're going to find our hero shot and i think this will be good right here we're going to convert this into our rec 709 and it is really cool to the touch. Now, what we're gonna end up doing is, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out of our thing here, and I'm gonna move this to our last node here. So that way, I'm getting a feel for what it looks like out of the Rec. 709 output, instead of actually sandwiching it into the DaVinci Wide Gamut. I think this is the best route to go. This is the way that I normally do it anyway. And the only thing you got to do here is if you guys do not have Kazi's charts, I highly, highly, highly encourage you guys to get these. It is the best investment that you would ever make as a colorist or as an editor. It speeds up everything. And I'm going to show you guys why this is very valuable. Okay. All right. So on Kazi's chart, we can go in here now. We're going to change our color space transform to Rec. 709, right? And we're going to go into our false color. And we're going to do that to the shot as well, okay? And instead of boom, come on, there it goes. There is faster ways of doing this. I'm just using a mouse right now, so bear with me while we get this 
worked out. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna do our false color, we gotta change our color space. So right off the bat, what do we see? We see that this one's a little bit hotter than this. And we're gonna go ahead and just bring down that exposure a little. But before we do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our mid gray point and our contrast, okay? Now, right now, right off the bat, you're gonna be able to see what this does. Now, what this is, is also in Kazi's charts. It is the mid gray. Mid gray is your 18% gray, okay? And we want to keep that where it's sitting across the board because that's your 18% gray, right? And that's gonna set your contrast. So we wanna keep this where it's at. And we're gonna take a look at this and we're gonna go ahead and take off our false color for a second. And what happens is, is that it points out exactly where our 18% gray is lying, okay? It's not like it's lying to you, but you get what I'm saying. Okay, so it's right here. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna press shift and then I'm gonna try to get this as close to 18% gray as possible. Now, when I'm making this S curve, what's happening is, is that everything around it is moving and not my 18% gray, it's always staying the same. So we're gonna go ahead and just balance out the shot. And I feel like it's really, really cool, which you can tell by the vector scope right now. We're sitting in magenta and it just gives me this willy type of vibe. We're gonna go ahead and bring this up a little something like that and we're gonna go ahead and move our offset and just tweak our white balance a little and get it into those tones that we needed to sit at okay and then what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take a look at what we got going on mainly looking here in my vector scope okay and it looks like it is almost equally yoked is what I would like to say looks pretty balanced it looks like this has just a little bit more red in the highlights so we're gonna go ahead and turn down the red just a hair something like that and now we could take a look at our mid gray and seeing where we're sitting at 384 we're gonna turn our mid gray see this one as you can see is a little bit brighter than this isn't that crazy Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna brighten this up just a hair. And we're gonna take this midpoint and just brighten, oops, too much. And there we go. Now we are perfectly exposed and I'm gonna bring down our highlight just a little. Something like that, yeah. So right here this is our shot match here um we're gonna go ahead and warm this up just a hair more what's throwing me off is the clouds but i'm mainly looking at the skin tones right now and you can actually go in here and really tighten this up by going in here and clicking on selected grades instead of doing that let's do a side by side comparison we can actually bring in the other clip right here so that way we can see a side-by-side -side comparison and make any other changes that we need and I, again I'm looking at the skin tone and obviously you know skin complexions are different but it looks really good and the way that that we can really find out if this is actually lining up is actually using the other chart for our rec 7 and 9 out now what we're going to do here is look at our false color and make a determination from here okay so he is a little hotter and but i think that'd be okay we're going to go ahead and look at our skin hue see this is why it's valuable because you can actually look 
at skin hue and make sure that the skin is all lining up. Got a little red right here, little green going on right here, and this one's more in the red. So what we're going to do is we're just going to balance it out a little. We're going to take down the red. And that looks really good. And then our last thing that we're going to take a look at is our saturation false color. And the saturation tool will help us line out the saturation and make sure that the saturation is, you know, working according to what we have here. So let's take a look at this. And that looks really good. Okay, so now we can turn this off and we can turn on our look, right? And what we created last week, which was our three strip Technicolor look. We'll come in here and turn this off. We'll turn on our three strip Technicolor look. Copy this over here. So. There is an easier method to doing this, and the easier method to, to actually bring the grade over is that you can go into color, and you can do ripple node changes to select eclipse, and that will do the, essentially the same thing, and it'll speed up your time on everything, okay? Again, we could bring in our look adjustments, and we should be golden. Let me do one last thing. I am very picky when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, cool. All right, so now we got that all applied, we can actually start balancing out the other shots and then bringing in the three strip Technicolor look. Again, guys, I, I hope you guys got some value out of this video. It is a quick video, and if you guys have not invested in the Kazi Toolkit, I highly encourage you guys to do so. I mean, this video is not sponsored by Kazi by any means. This is just my honest opinion on his toolkit that he offers. Yes, I know it, the whole toolkit $776, but I don't want you guys to look at the price tag, okay? I want you guys to look at the value that you are receiving from this toolkit. It will greatly increase your speed when it comes to color correction and color grading that's why i highly encourage you guys to look into investing in this toolkit kazi has a lot of videos on the toolkit itself and you guys can check him out on the youtube channel the only reason why i bring kazi stuff up a lot is because you know he is an amazing mentor not only to myself but to everyone that's in his freelance colorist masterclass and he has a uh, private Facebook group as well and now when you purchase the the toolkit you can be accepted into that private Facebook group and we're just one big family you know we share advice and tips and tricks on ways to you know boost our skill sets and our levels as a colorist and as an editor as well. Anyway, I highly encourage you guys to look into Kazi. The link to Kazi's toolkit is in the description box below. And you know, I just, I really like him. <laughs> well, that's a wrap for today's video. If you guys are new to this channel, please consider to press that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell notification icon for more videos to come. And we post mainly every week on DaVinci Resolve tutorials. So if you guys are interested in learning editing, this is the channel for you, all right? We're gonna learn, we're gonna grow together. And you know, sometimes I'm off. I don't always post on DaVinci Resolve. Sometimes I like to do more filmmaking advice because my background is a cinematographer and a DP. I just do editing on the side and I love doing editing, I love doing color grading, and I love teaching. So there's a little bit about my background, okay? But anyway, download the, the footage and the node tree in the description box below and check out Kazi's toolkit, which is in the link 
in the description box below and if you guys have any comments any questions please put it in the comments section and i will get back to you you know i was thinking about going into this series of grading your guys's footage and if you guys are interested in that you know you guys can email us and send us your footage clip or put it in the comment section saying yes i am interested or if you guys have general questions or video topics, put it in the comment section, okay? That's what we're here. We're here as a community. We're here as a family. We're here to grow together and learn together. And you know, I'm not perfect. So if I'm making a mistake or if I'm not doing something right, you guys can correct me in the comment section, okay? This is just the way that I do it. And I hope it literally helps you, okay? I want all these videos to bring uh, a lot of value to you and that's what it's all about that's what this channel is all about all right anyway until next time practice and create